Andrea Clem, and you are watching Turn to the Stars. I want to say thank you for tuning in today. Today is May 6, 2014, and um, I want to thank everyone who's watching and who continues to support Turn to the Stars for um, uh, coming out to our 24th Psychic and Holistic Fair, which was this past Saturday, May 3rd, at the Yard uh, Steakhouse in Manchester, New Hampshire. Um, we had a really wonderful event, and the theme was a sharing of our gifts, and it was that and so much more. We had a really great day, so I wanted to say thank you to everyone who participated and everyone who came. And we look forward to seeing you at our next event, which is going to be on July 19th at the Yard once again. And this is going to be our 25th and our four-year anniversary. So I look forward to seeing you there. And um, I want to just sort of give you a little overview of what we're going to look at on today's show. As you can see on the screen, I'm going to be talking about the full moon in Scorpio that is coming on May 14th. And uh, that energy continues um, to build, especially between now and May 14th. And uh, there's also this incredible, beautiful um, configuration of energy being formed by planets in our universe which is called a kite formation and in my terms or my language i have called that also the energy of the diamond soul so i'm going to start out by uh talking about the kite formation and then i want to talk about may 6th the kite formation or the diamond soul energy that's manifesting astrologically and then i'm going to talk about the star of david energy which is occurring on may 9th and then leading up to the full moon which is may 14th occurring or coming to its exact peak of energy at 2.29 p.m. And I just want to say at the beginning of today's show, um, April has been in going into May an incredible energy month, um, solar eclipse, lunar eclipse around the 15th, solar eclipse, um, and the, um, I'm going to actually mark all those dates down as we, uh, you know, cover them as, as I continue with the show, but what happens, astrology studies the actual influences and potential of the planets that surround us here on Earth, and reminds us that we are part of a bigger whole. Um, you know, our planets, us, we all revolve around the sun, which is the symbol, symbol or symbology of the spirit of life. Um, and so I wanted to just say that when the planets don't talk nice to each other, meaning that they're in a very difficult angle of configuration, what it causes or what it influences us to not talk nice to each other and um, we've had some of this type of we've been really experiencing this over the course of April and there's lots of stress and challenges and experiences we're faced with overcoming April has been a month that has been filled with that but also as we come close to the end of April we see that the planets are beginning to talk nicer to each other so that inspires us to talk nice to each other and um, it also set, sends a signal that there's relief and that we have the ability to understand and cope with a little bit more sense of ease and compassion for each other and that we find ways to overcome. So that's what I want to talk about with May. Um, and uh, some of the things you're going to see in today's show is actually called sacred geometry and uh, it's really interesting stuff because the way the planets communicate how they are talking to each other affects us uh, here on earth so um it's a really funny experience uh i wanted to share with you i have a 
a couple astrology classes that I teach at the Dairy um, Cooperative Adult Education Program at West Running Brook School in Dairy. And my Wednesday night class, um, they're, they're really a great group of ladies. And uh, one of my students, Sarah Barr, has uh, called the Grand Cardinal Cross the GCC. So she's... Uh, she's she's really a great light, a uh, really fun person, and so it's kind of caused us to, uh, you know, kind of start abbreviating some of these configurations that we're seeing formed by the planets, and uh, you know, especially since we have that GCC or Grand Cardinal Cross present um, energetically from April 13th through May 5th was which was just yesterday when that energy began to break apart and it has presented us with lots of delays lots of awareness a lot of of um awakening to areas that we are all changing in so it's not been the easiest path to um walk upon um and uh, so I wanted to just sort of share that with you, um, the GCC, which we call the Grand Cardinal Cross, which actually is going to remain constant here and there until 2015. Um, the Grand Trine Kite, we call now the GTK, and the Star of David, which we're going to be talking about these configurations on today's show. So the, the Star of David, we call that the SOD. So it's just kind of some fun astrology humor. Um, so I just want to recap just a little bit. April 15th, we experienced a total lunar eclipse which we call a TLC, pointing us in a direction that reminded us that we are not alone. That total lunar eclipse was in Libra. Libra is a sign of relating, and it is a sign of partnership. And it did remind us that there was going to be, that there is a new direction that every single full moon for the next six months is going to um, stimulate and that is that we need to learn how to go in a different direction and learn to relate better to each other. On April 13th, we had the Grand Cardinal Cross uh, become very strong and active, and that's the GCC. On April 22nd, the fifth exact square occurred between the two power planets, Uranus and Pluto. And uh, that, that um, universal square um, is actually one that has been showing up in our between these two power planets and this is exactly the fifth time that it has formed this exact square and what it does is it stimulates and encourages us to speak up for ourselves to listen to others, but also to speak up for ourselves and to stick up for ourselves. We're learning a lot about ourselves, but we're also learning about how we can relate better to others. Um, April 29th, we experienced the annular solar eclipse, also known as the Ring of Fire, and we can call that annular solar eclipse, the ASE, annular solar eclipse, and that was in the constellation of Taurus. Um, and on May 4th, the, there was the beginning of the formation of a grand trite, trine kite, uh, GTK, which began to form. I'm going to explain what all of this means very shortly. On May 5th, yesterday, the GCC, or the Grand Cardinal Cross, began to separate. On May 9th, we will experience a very beautiful energy of a Star of David. And as you may or may not know, throughout history, since about the year 2000, well, actually, since about 2,000 years ago, the Star of David has appeared indicating that something very big, very good, very beautiful was happening in the consciousness of humankind. So 2,000 years ago, a Star of David appeared, formed by the angles of the planets, and it served as a guide 
to the wise men who were in search of the special baby that had just been born. So on May 12th, you know, I wanted to just point that out about the Star of David. On May 12th, the kite, there's this kite that you heard me talk about before, um, will begin to separate, and on May 14th, we'll experience the full moon in Scorpio at its peak of fullness. So this full moon is actually very special because it does um, mark the closing of this portal of change that has been brought forward by the eclipses that occurred in April. And also this full moon is conjunct Saturn in Scorpio. And I'm going to talk more about what that means to us energetically. The solar eclipse in the constellation of Taurus on April 29th started or raised our awareness astrologically to the pleasures of life which is really associated with Taurus which is ruled by the planet Venus. Venus we know is love. It is the beauty that of the world that surrounds us. It carries that essence and Taurus is famously, so famously associated with the sometimes obsessive accumulation of stuff, meaning money, investments, possessions, resources, and the organization and management of assets of all kind. So Taurus is really the money sign or the financial sign or the sign of materials and the beauty that can be created through that root or that foundation of Taurus. Now Taurus is an earth sign and I'm really setting up here uh, a path toward understanding what is coming to full fruition around the full moon in Scorpio. So let's talk further about this. Taurus is an earth sign along with Virgo and Capricorn they're all, all those are the three earth signs. Um, it is concerned concerned with what is tangible, what is real, what is solid, and that means materials, earth materials. Um, it brings to our senses the, the, the um, touch, smell, taste, sight, and hearing. It's also, um, it's also about what it feels like to be in the human body. It reminds us what it feels like to be in the human body. Um, so are you tense or are you relaxed? Do you feel an inner glow of comfort? Are you in pain? Taurus brings you into your body, so to speak. So this energy is, is reminding us of what is real, what we value, what's important to us. So we also need to take note that Taurus is a fixed sign. Fixed means very, very strong. Um, the fixed signs of the zodiac are Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, and Aquarius. So this means its purpose, the solar eclipse in Taurus, the purpose was of this eclipse to bring to our realization the stabili stabilization, continuity, and management of our assets even more so than the accumulation of our assets. So in other words, it's not just about making regular deposits in your bank account. It's about ensuring that it's a safe place. This is a place that my money, that my values are protected and um, that, that they're being respected and that they're achieving the most um, interest. So what's been brought to our attention since that solar eclipse on April 29th, that solar eclipse in Taurus, is what's our, what is it that brings us pleasure? And come to think about it, you know, you know if you want to go a little bit further, what is pleasure? So, you know, I, I really pondered this. I was thinking about this because this is what Taurus stimulates. And Taurus asks us to ask this question to ourselves is, what feels good? What makes us feel good? It's the feeling that you get in response to an experience, right? So we consider that we typically associate pleasure with a thing or an activity and or something that makes us have a really good feeling. So even though it seems like it's about stuff, Taurus, it's it's really the things that give us pleasure, the things that um, 
that we can react in a positive way. So when you feel pleasure, it means that there's this stimulation of hormones and that there's this party of going on in your head. Pleasure is really brought on by the stimulation of hormones. So something I just came across which is really interesting, which is really associated with pleasure, is that there's four primary pleasure hormones and neuro neurotransmitters uh, that form the cornerstones of our experience um, of pleasure. We have endorphins to help us deal with pain, and it gives us the well-known connection between the physical exertion and the relief from depression. And then there's the dopamine hormone, which gives us motivation to pursue rewards and is believed to play a role in addiction. And then there's the oxytocin, which enables us to trust and bond with others and is sometimes experimentally used to treat antisocial behavior. And so, um, and then there's the fourth hormone um, that has to do with pleasure is serotonin and it gives us a feeling of empowerment and pleasure connected and that's the the hormone that's connected with the pleasure that we get from food and it also does help us to guard against depression so there really is a very direct link between how we think and how we feel and as human beings we naturally tend to fixate on negative experiences. So it's been proven that positive and negative emotions use different memory systems in the brain. And, you know, it's been proven that positive emotions don't transfer as easily as long term memory um, to our long term memory. Actually, the negative ones transfer faster than the positive ones. So the energy stimulation of this solar eclipse that occurred on April 29th in Taurus provided us with the tools that we need to awaken to the connection between our humanness and the world around us and that we are changing and that our physical senses are in a search for things that provide pleasure, things that provide beauty. And I just thought it was really, really important that we talked about some things that were really positive on today's show. And because there is that stimulation astrologically growing around us. And so, however, since we've naturally, we're, as you heard me say, we're naturally high wired hardwired to anticipate negative experiences, we have to work harder to find ways to remember and relive positive experiences. So here's where Taurus's quest for stability and endurance can either help or hinder us. If we allow ourselves to continually focus on things that are stressful, painful, aver adverse, or unfulfilling, it is those brain cells and those memories that get fed. It's really important to realize the difference. So it's very important to pursue and engage in developing positive experiences in order to feed and nourish the pleasure centers in the mind, the body, the soul, and the spirit. Without this, we risk becoming imbalanced, overly invested in the negative, while becoming dismissive or even cynical about the positive. So what does all this have to do with the solar eclipse in Taurus? These, a solar eclipse, actually what it does is it shakes things up. The moon, which is the feelings, especially the unconscious ones, temporarily blocks the sun during an eclipse and the sun represents our conscious sense of self and our purpose. So a solar eclipse gives us access to awareness about ourselves our identity and the world around us that can be potentially overwhelming or disruptive. So, you know, at its most powerful, an eclipse can shake us up to the core so that we don't see life in quite the same way anymore. And this is not necessarily a bad thing, it just means that change is upon us and it's necessary this change is very necessary for our growth and evolvement. And it's interesting because what happened on the solar eclipse was Mercury was conjunct the solar eclipse. 
and that means it was right beside the sun and the moon in the constellation of Taurus. And um, at the time of the eclipse, with Mercury next to it, it tends the tendency or the potential was to slow us, slow down our perception enough that we could avoid becoming overwhelmed by whatever we we're going through. Um, Taurus is naturally this an Earth sign, and there is a process to the thoughts and to this change that is upon us. So Mercury's energy in Taurus wants us wants to help us take one bite of information at a time, chew it, swallow it before taking another. And so if you're doing things quickly, this energy might make you feel like you're being left behind by the turmoil that's happening around you. But also on this eclipse, Mercury was also opposite Saturn, Saturn, which insists that things be done very slowly. So if you try to speed up your experiences um, during this time, um, it'll be like trying to push against something that doesn't want you to move that way, and that is fast. This wants you to go slow. Take your time, um, go at things, take the approach was, which is very methodical, step by step. Patience is certainly required for anything that is developed that is being developed right now. Which leads us to talk about the Grand Trankite aspect pattern, or as I call it, the presence of the diamond soul energy, which is made up by Jupiter, Saturn, and Chiron, which the solar eclipse right at the very top of the diamond or kite was in full form um, by May 4th. So this, this I'm going to show you a chart of this very soon. Um, but right right now, what I want to show you is a picture of this kite formation, which is um, the first picture in my, that's it right there. You see, it looks like a kite with the point of it being at the solar eclipse, which is what I was just talking about. You see on the bottom left, uh, the glyph for the sun, the circle with the dot, the crescent, um, symbol, which is the moon, and Mercury, the planet Mercury, the planet that rules over our communication, our thoughts, our reasoning, our logic. And um, you see that there is a red line that goes straight back to Saturn. And that Saturn um, planet is in a um, water sign, which is Scorpio. And it, that is what holds us fast. Um, to our responsibilities and it lets us know that we've worked hard enough or we haven't worked hard enough. So this is actually a very beautiful configuration. We also see Jupiter down on the right hand corner in the constellation of Cancer which reminds us that it's very important that we expand in understanding our families, our our, our homes and the root of where we come from. Very important in this whole configuration. And then we have Chiron in this configuration up on the left, more closer to the top. It looks like a key in the constellation of Pisces. And again, um, this configuration started to form um, around May 4th and will hold fast and very strong with us till about May 12th and show up intermittently until mid-June. This slow-moving, harmonious planetary configuration holds the potential um, to bring together insight, healing, and structure. Now I'd like to show you another picture which is uh, May 6th. That, and, and this is actually the chart of right now, 12 noon on May 6, 2014. And this, you see the shaded areas, which is at the very top of the chart. Uh, we see the sun shaded in the constellation of Taurus at 16. And if we go counter, we go clockwise around this, um, we are actually seeing the kite here amongst all the other planetary configurations that are occurring as well. But I want to point out the beauty that this chart holds. The kite 
is, or the diamond, the essence of the di diamond soul is one that is very, very positive, very uplifting, like a kite. Um, the potential here is to rebuild your outlook on life. It provides that potential in a way that is both optimistic and grounded and delivers resolve and brings healing in a natural, methodical, and gradual way. Um, and so I wanted to show you this chart as well because that grand trine is really embodied by this our, in our solar system. It is a beautiful aspect, a di the essence of a diamond soul showing up in our universe, in our solar systems, reminds us that we are unbreakable, that we shine brightly, that we have what it takes to feel and to know and to expand and to be disciplined and to heal, and that the very essence of our life is one that has holds so many resources, so much value, and that we together have the um, potential to receive this if we choose. So I'm just going to come back right here now to um, talk further about that solar eclipse that occurred on April 29th because Mercury was with that solar eclipse. It provided a spark that ignites this planetary lantern and it keeps it glowing over the next six to seven weeks. And I want to point out that um, um, you know, we're getting close to the end of the show, and I just have so much information that I'm so excited about sharing with you about the month of May. So I'm probably going to be talking about this again on next week's show, but I want to show you the configuration uh, that is occurring on May 9th, the Star of David. And you can, I removed all the other aspects that I could to show you the Star of David that's being formed and is at its peak on May 9th. It exactly, um, this chart is, is uh, created for 6 a.m. in the morning. And this Star of David is quite beautiful. And as you heard me say before, it's a symbol that something very beautiful is manifesting in the human consciousness. And then I also want to show you the next chart here, which is the full moon on May 14th. And we have one, one um, of the, the triangles or the grand trines in, uh, that formed up that Star of David on May 9th still holding fast with us here. And that we call that a grand trine in water, which opens up the doors for us to be sensitive to each other, to be kind to each other, for us to be disciplined in this time of transformative and of transformation and change which is affecting us emotionally mentally physically on all realms and so this full moon you can see the sun up in the top right um in uh at 23 degrees of taurus and the full moon at 23 degrees of scorpio so just prior to this date march i'm sorry may 14th um, there is this incredible energy to become very aware of where we've been and where we're going. And, and it's also, it reminds us to be uh, really cognizant and disciplined and controlled as we look at what is toxic, what we are emotionally and um, logically changing in our lives and that communication is going to be v a very important key. So I want to talk more about this next week on Turn to the Stars and um, but uh, if we could come right back here and we're all set with that chart. Um, I just want to say thank you everyone for watching Turn to the Stars. Astrology is such an important science that looks at the actual location of the planets and how they affect us. So until next week, um, I want to just say turn to the stars and you'll find your answers there. 
If you have any questions how these things are personally affect you, um, you can take a look at www.turntothestars.com and I'd be happy to explain those things to you. So until next week, take good care and I'll see you then.